Does your little one fight naps? I hear you, you're not alone. Do you find yourself pacing around or walking around with a push chair and just no matter what you do, you cannot get them to take that sleep. They just fight, fight, fight. And even though you know that they're exhausted and really need the sleep, well, this is all too familiar for us. We know exactly what you're going through. Many, many parents are struggling with the same thing. But the good news is we have a solution and we know how to help you to overcome this so that your little one can get the naps they really, really need. So stick around because in this episode, we are going to share the keys to getting this on track. But before we do that, do me a favor and like this episode, subscribe to us, whether you're on YouTube or on the podcast version, and give us a subscribe and help us to reach more exhaustive families who really, really need to hear this message. Okay, so with that said, let's delve on in. The first thing that I'm going to give you to help you to get your little one napping well is you need to understand and to know the ideal intervals for naps at your little one's age because this changes with age. The older they get, the longer they are able to be awake between sleeps. If you know what that looks like, you're far more likely to attempt to get your little one down for a sleep at a time that's going to fit better for them. There's no point trying to force your little one or trying and trying and trying to get your little one to sleep when it's not the ideal window for them. Maybe they're undertired, maybe they're overtired. And you might think, but I, I know my little one's exhausted, so why aren't they sleeping? Well, because perhaps they're so overtired that they're wired. When we go into an overtired state, the brain releases hormones that actually are chemically keeping us awake, even though we're exhausted. So you could be fighting a losing battle if you're trying to get your little one to go to sleep at the wrong time for them. Knowing what those intervals are is like a sleep secret weapon. And the next thing to note is the ideal nap length. These two go hand in hand. By knowing how long they ought to be asleep for will also help you because if they're catnapping and if they're grabbing 20, 30 minutes here and there, they're not getting quality rest. They're not getting the sleep they really need. If you know how long they ought to sleep for, then you can help them to get that sleep. And if they wake too soon, you can work on a resettling technique and try to get them back off to sleep rather than just accepting that that's it now, that's the end of that nap. And I say they go hand in hand because actually getting them down for the sleep at the ideal optimal window is more likely to lead to the ideal optimal length of nap as well. So just understanding those things and knowing what that looks like at every age and stage means that you're informed and you can get little one down at the right time and for the right amount of time. Now, something that is often overlooked when you're facing nap challenges is bedtime. Bedtime is important too. It plays a part in this because overtiredness is gonna sabotage naps. And if your little one is overtired because bedtime's not great or takes too long or they're going to sleep too late, if they're overtired, then the next day they're overtired already. Again, fighting a losing battle because they're going to find it very difficult to fall asleep when they're overtired. Of course, occasionally they will crash and burn and they will just zonk out, but that's not what will happen regularly. Those are one-offs and they're not great quality either. And the other thing to look at is the sleep onset. So you could have these other things checked off your list and go, yep, 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 got that, got that. But what about the sleep onset? And by sleep onset, I mean, how does your little one fall to sleep? Is there something that does it for them? Or is there something you need to do to them that gets them off to sleep? Because if something has to be done to them or for them in order for them to fall asleep, that's the sleep onset association and they're going to require that in order to get to sleep for a nap as well. Until of course you've reached the point where that doesn't work anymore and that's inevitable. That's going to happen too. So the best thing you can do is help your little one to develop a really healthy sleep onset that doesn't require something to almost trick them into it or to lull them off to sleep, but actually helps them to feel that sensation of going to sleep. And then they're going to sleep longer and have more nourishing, deep, healthy sleep. A big tip I wanna share with you right now is that you've got to keep practicing at this because the thing with naps is it doesn't come so easily for some as night sleep 
We can sort night sleep out and still have nap challenges because it takes some time and it takes a lot of practice. And just as you feel like it's not working and when you're probably really, really close and you've got to keep going, you just go, you don't know that and you stop. Take, take Naomi, for instance, a client of mine. I remember when she felt this way and we had ticked off all the other things and we had so many other things solved, but the naps were a continual battle. And several times she felt like saying to me, it's not working, give me something else. But I said to her, keep going, trust me, keep going. Because every day that you practice, even if it doesn't feel like it's working, that practice is leading to an outcome and to a result. And I said to her, I promise you it will click. And I helped her and supported her and absolutely did click. And she said to me, I would have never kept going if it weren't for you, encouraging me and supporting me and holding me accountable. She would have just quit. She would have gone, it, it isn't working, it's too hard. But she didn't, she kept going and it did click. And that little one went on to be such a great sleeper. And for many, many years later, and she still is a great sleeper now. Let's recap then. So what are these key things that you need to know to make sure your little one sleeps really well for naps and doesn't keep fighting these naps? Know those top two things. First of all, what are the ideal intervals for the naps to take place for your little one's age? And what is the ideal nap length? Do you need to work on some nap resettling techniques? The third one is bedtime. Check in on your bedtime. How does it look? How does it work? Is it all going smoothly or does it need some attention? Is it too late? How can you shape the bedtime to make sure it's absolutely optimal to avoid overtiredness? What does the sleep onset look like? Both at bedtime and for naps. Is something putting your little one to sleep and that they're not completely doing it? Then if that's the case, you're gonna to continue to have challenges. But if you can help your little one to develop amazing sleep onset skills and associations, then they're going to be so good at it. Naps are gonna become a lot easier for them and for you. And that fifth point was to keep on practicing, keep going. If you don't know what to do, then get the answers first. But once you know what to do, then you've got to stick with it. Keep going and it will then click into place. You need that solution first. Once you've got it, keep going. So I want to give you right now a gift of my free sleep training series. It's a three part video series that you can get instant access to right now. So click the link and join us inside of the Sweet Dreams sleep series. I can't wait to see you in there and I'll see you very, very soon.